Hey everybody, Jem Schofield here coming to you from the barn with a special episode. This is a sponsored episode. I am a Westcott Top Pro and they sent me some of these new lights, the L60B. This is a bicolor chip on board LED light. It's continuous and the idea here is for me to check them out. They didn't tell me what to shoot, how to shoot it. And it's definitely not going to be a review. I'll tell you a little bit about the light and what it can do. And then we'll get into a couple of setups where we're looking at using these in a controlled environment like this for lighting and shooting interviews and people. So this light right here is pretty straightforward. First of all, just in terms of the light itself, look at how small it is. It's probably the smallest 60 watt cob light i've ever seen it's really quite tiny here and very easy to operate from what i've found you can see here we'll just turn it on that on the right hand side is our intensity it does have bluetooth there is an app so you can connect to this and even at one percent this light is very very bright and then the left knob by default is color temperature. So we've got 2700 all the way up to 6500 Kelvin. So a very nice range there in terms of color temperature. And then the other trick, which is pretty standard now with these LEDs up its sleeve, is if I press this button on the left, it will access the built in effects. There's nine of them. Your normal cast of characters, you know, paparazzi, TV kind of um, campfire, and even emergency vehicles, stuff like that. So you can dial those in and you can even change the timing of how those work. So that's essentially the light. It's got a built in yoke here, which is part of it. It slides back and forth, so it has a little bit of flexibility in terms of its position. And honestly, you don't need a double-sided yoke for a light of this size. It's so lightweight. Um, you need to crank it down if you're going to put big modifiers on it, which we'll take a look at later on. And this particular kit that they sent me came inside of this bag here. So it's, um, you know, these lights are uh, well under $300 US. This kit comes with two of the lights. It comes with two reflectors, which we'll take a look at. It comes with two of these rapid box switch adapters, which I'll talk about as well. And then it also comes with a soft box, which we'll be using in our first setup, which is the uh, rapid box Octa S. So it's a small version of that with diffusion. So the reflector um, is a, this particular one, they have other uh, another, at least one other reflector, is a 45 degree angle reflector. So it's taking this broader beam that we have here and you're concentrating it. I'll just go ahead and pop this on here so we can see what it looks like. And you can see it's much more concentrated and it's, you know, it's doing what it's supposed to be doing. So those are the reflectors. And then we're going to go ahead and take a look at this rapid box switch system, which allows you to take uh, virtually any lighting mount that's out there. You just need different adapters and you can adapt them to Westcott's softbox solutions. So this one's going to go on to here. This is obviously the mount for the 60, the L60B. And then... Here's the soft box that came with the kit that I got. And then there's this little mount here that's on all of the rapid box systems. And that matches up to what you're seeing right here. So this is sort of the key to the castle. You have to have the mount that's appropriate, that fits the lighting fixture that you have. It goes to this, and then this is universal to the rapid box system. So if I then take this light, and this modifier here, I'm just going to unplug this light for now, and you take a look at it. It essentially just slides right in to this space. You pull back, and now you are set with your light modifier. 
and that is inside of that particular softbox. Lots of other modifiers out there. This is a lantern one that's about $70 US, and that also has the rapid box switch mount here, so you can just take that same light and attach it. And again, this is a pretty universal system where if you have a light fixture from another manufacturer and you want to use Westcott's modifiers, you just get the appropriate rapid box switch mount for that. Let's say Bowens to that switch mount, and then you can go ahead and attach it to their different rapid boxes. Uh, one other thing that we have inside of here, which is not part of the kit, is this gel holder kit. It's about $30 US. Um, I asked them to send it because I like some flexibility. You essentially have different uh, uh, like kind of theatrical gels in here. There's four of those. There's diffusion and then it's magnetized. So it just pops right onto the front here and you can see there it is. And what's nice about this is it's designed to work with the reflector. So what you do is you take the reflector itself, you pop it into here, you tighten it down and then you can go ahead and just pop your different gels on here. And the other thing that's nice about this is that you have an umbrella mount. So you can just attach an umbrella here and push through or bounce off of that umbrella and use that. And for very little money, it gives you additional ways to modify a light like this. So I think that, you know, that's a nice piece of kit to have in your bag. Um, and because it's a bicolor light, having some theatrical gels to add some color may be worthwhile. So that's all the stuff for the most part that I have here. We're not going to be using this. Well, maybe we will later on in one of the setups. But what I want to do first and foremost is I want to take this light right here. We're going to go ahead and let me just switch over and I can give you sort of a, a view of the room here and we're going to go ahead and put that over there. I'll bring in talent and we'll start to take a look at what it looks like. I may be coming back over here to switch cameras a little bit for you and we'll turn that light off and replace it with the one that we have here. That's just basically giving me that little kick there so we won't have that for the rest of this. And I'll just call out any modifiers and things that I'm using during these setups. Um, let me go ahead and get this light over to that area over there. Um, and then we'll go from there. Okay, let's go ahead. Now that I've reset that light, I'm going to bring talent in. London, if you wouldn't mind coming in, that would be great. And... I'm going to go ahead and turn another overhead on. And if you just sit down there, that'd be awesome. And then we'll just go over here to the wide. So basically, we now have this L60B over here in that Octa S. And I'm going to strike this. We are in a controlled environment. So we're probably not going to have to crank this light too much. But I'm just going to go ahead and set it here. Uh, we'll start with that and then we'll get rid of these other lights in the space so we can take a look at what's happening. So there's one gone and then here's my key light from over here and we'll switch over to this and you'll see this is our basic shot. Right now I have the L60B at about a uh, 25%. So you can see here if I start to move that over and we start to adjust it, we have obviously our standard kind of Rembrandt lighting here. Depending on the shape of the person's face, you may be coming more to camera or more away from camera to get that little triangle. And then we can easily side key here. So we can just go ahead and walk that out of frame and you can see, and we've just got a single light except for those little background lights in there, which are just creating a little bit of something in the space. I could just go ahead and bring in a little side fill, which you can see here. So that's just a four by four here, part of the Scrim Gym Cine line. And we take a look at that and I'll just walk that out again. 
and you can see what it's doing and then bring that back in and we're just grabbing that light from the other side if i pull it over just here a little bit we can have a little bit more of wrap but overall we're just trying to grab some of that light here and you can see as i walk it in closer to talent what it's doing and then we'll get rid of it so one of the nice things about the rapid box switch system is even though i'm using this smaller modifier right now i can change it out and i can use something much larger so i'm just going to turn this off and we're going to go ahead and reset inside of here and i'm going to go ahead and get a much much bigger modifier from the rapid box line and then also bring that second light into play so we've made some changes in the space. Let me take you through them. So over here, we've taken the L60B and that same rapid box switch system, and we've attached it to this giant softbox. So this is the Octa L, and I also have the grid on here. We're in a controlled environment, so using a large modifier like this is fine, even though it has a baffle which is like a break of light inside. So there's no hot spots, And then it has the outside diffusion and the grid. It's just much more controlled and we'll have plenty of output from the light for that to work here. Obviously, if we're going into an environment that has a lot more ambient light, that's when we start to look at fixtures with higher output. So that's set over there. That's gonna be our key light. And then over here is the second L60B. And I've attached the 45 degree reflector to this and then that little gel holder. And it just has the diffusion in it. And the reason I'm gonna do that is if I switch over to our hero camera here and I pan a little bit right, you'll see that we have a little bit of daylight coming in. So I wanna go ahead and just sort of pull that in as a little kick light for talent here, which I think will work out well. So let me go ahead and strike this. My guess is before we were at about 25% with the little Octa S, we've got a lot of light being absorbed here. So I think we're probably going to be up at least to about a 50% here because we've got the, the break, we've got the front diffusion, we have the grid, which is absorbing and also focusing light. And then this one over here, my guess, because of how intense it is, I think we're probably gonna be somewhere in that one to 5%. I'm gonna start at 1% and see where we go with this and see how it reads on camera. So let me go ahead and strike these other two lights here so that we don't have those as part of the equation. And we'll switch over to our hero camera here and you can see, yeah, okay, at 1%, it's probably plenty bright enough. The difference though is I've got daylight so I'm going to go ahead and cool this light off quite a bit so we're getting closer to the color temperature of what's coming in from that room over there and then let's go ahead and take a look at our key in this big soft box and I'm going to start to bring it a little bit more towards camera so we can see that and you can see that much larger source is wrapping really nicely. I'll go ahead and that was at 50%. I'm up to about 57% here. And then we just have talent being interviewed. Just pretend somebody's asking you a question and go ahead and answer it. Go for it. Yeah. Yeah, good. All right. So you can sort of see that. And then we've got that motivated light coming in. We've, you know, brought that into a cooler place. So we're definitely doing some mixed lighting here. But it does feel like that light that's over here is essentially being, it has a motivation from that open door that we're seeing in the frame. If we didn't see that and we switch back over to our hero camera and we sort of had this in our frame, then it wouldn't make a lot of sense to do that. And if I wanted a kick, I'd probably go ahead and warm that back up again so that it felt a little bit more like the room that we're in. Um, again, that's at zero and then that's at 1%. Um, I might push this through a soft box or bounce it off of an umbrella 
if I needed that to be either a little bit softer or less intensity, I could back it off a little, but that's feeling pretty good to me. And then you can see that when we have such a huge modifier like this, we just get a really nice big catch light in Talon's eyes. And, you know, just moving that light to a different position obviously is going to give you a different look and feel. I'll back it off because it's a big modifier, so you don't see that. And then, you know, this really just becomes what you like to see inside of your frame. So let me go ahead and turn back our other lights, especially that one. And you can see that uh, these are quite versatile. These little 60 watt LED lights can do a lot in especially a controlled environment. When you get into, again, larger environments with more ambient lights and things like that, whether they're practical or natural light, that's when bigger fixtures make a difference. But there's no reason why you can't take a small fixture and put it in a big modifier when you're doing things like this. And that rapid box switch system really helps in those situations. Thanks to our talent London for today, and thanks for watching.